Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Checkfront, the booking platform trusted by over 5,000 tour and activity operators around the world. You can start your own free 21-day trial over at Checkfront.com. Welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow tourpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hello and welcome to episode 78 of the Tourpreneur podcast. Today we have another installment of what I learned this week. Today is May 3rd, 2020. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who wrote in to say how much you enjoyed last week's session. Quite frankly, I was a bit nervous putting it out because I always like interviewing people, right? I like to make my guest the star of the show and not me, but over 400 of you listened to that episode last week, and I had some wonderful email. We talked about webinar fatigue, and I know that resonated with many of you. So thank you. I'll, I'll keep up with these sessions, certainly during lockdown, and we'll see where we're at then. And as always with Tourpreneur, if I've learned nothing during a week, I won't put a show out because I value your time too much to put out filler information. All right, so this week, what did I learn? First of all, I purchased the arrival report called Experiences Revolution, Arrival Experience Revolution, very grand title, $29. First time Arrival have put out a paid report. And I think what's important to remember here is Arrival give a lot of information out for free. Look at the webinars they've been putting out. Whether you're fatigued with them or not, they're still putting those out. Apart from one session when they asked for $10, it's all, all been free. They have articles, they have reports. So they give a lot away for free. So I didn't mind shelling out $29 to help Arrival out because they are a business that is also struggling right now. I mean, think about it. Two of their conferences gone. September, I haven't heard anything about it, but I'd be really surprised if it goes ahead. And from what I've heard from many of you, you we may not have the funds to go. Okay. So anyway, bought the report to help them out. And also because I want to learn... And I put an article out, and if you go to tourpreneur.com forward slash 78, you can read that in full, where I talk about my seven key takeaways. And I won't go through them all on this call, other than to say the biggest thing that, that worried me about the report was arrival of projecting that we won't return to pre-COVID levels until 2023. Very, very sobering thought. They provide a forecast model showing four phases of recovery and I read through it and I just thought, well, who really knows what's going to happen right now? And you can take it as guidance, but not as gospel. And I know the arrival guys will be really happy if they're wrong and we come back sooner. But I don't want tourpreneur listeners to, to study this and think, okay, this is how it's going to be. Because they don't really know. They've conducted interviews and they're researching in the industry, but none of us really know what's going to happen come lockdown. We don't know what the airlines are going to do. We don't know what government is going to do in terms of restrictions. So let, let's leave the forecasting and predictions to one side for now. Although, again, very sobering if we don't get back. Because Arrival said in this report that in 2019, they reckon the market size for tours, activities, and attractions, and let's remember, attractions are in this, okay, does muddy the waters somewhat for tourpreneurs. They reckoned it was worth $254 billion. Now, I've heard the number $180 billion. This is a big jump. So we go from that great year of 2019 
to what's happening now and likely to happen until 2023 based on their numbers. The other item that kind of surprised me was sales are mainly offline. Operators sold $44 billion of sales of tours, activities, and attractions online in 2019 through their own websites and online travel agencies. That's only 17% of sales. And first of all, I thought, wow, that's, that's a lot less than I thought, especially when you hear all the noise about OTAs and online bookings. But I looked at the report and I thought, well, I wonder what this percentage would be without attractions. Because how many times have you been outside an aquarium or a zoo, and you haven't booked your ticket online, you just rock on up and you might with the family, or oh, let's go in. I know I've done that. I used to do that in New York City all the time. Things like One World Observatory and others, especially before I worked in tours and activities where I didn't even know you could book online. And I didn't know anything about skip the line tickets either. So I know arrivals say this is the first in a series of reports, but I, I do feel uh, this figure is misleading. And I would love to see this number purely for tours and activities. And then even that separated further where I would like to see that number for non-multi-days because multi-days is also, you're going to pick up the phone. And, okay, no, that's not true, Shane. I, I booked a six-day tour around Scotland once with the wonderful Rabbies tours um, and I did that all online. But most people are going to want to pick the phone up. Uh, so I'd like to see that split out as well so we can really see what that, that number is. And then the other thing that really kind of surprised me was half of all operators do not engage in standard, even free digital marketing. And it got me thinking, you know, why is that? Especially if it's you know, creating a Facebook page is free, takes a bit of time, but most of us are on Facebook. Most of us are following Facebook pages. Why don't we do that? And my offer to you, dear listener, is if there's any areas of digital marketing that you're really struggling with, maybe you don't know where to get started with Facebook ads or you're confused about SEO, let me know, tourpreneurshow at gmail.com or come on our Facebook group, tourpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. Let us know there because let me go out and find the experts for you that will come on and share at least some guidance on how to get started. They're not going to share the secret sauce with you because that's how they make a living. But at least they can get us started because I always say to digital marketing agencies, far better you have clients who understand the landscape, the vocabulary, the terminology of digital marketing, because you can achieve better results together than somebody who hasn't got a clue. So overall, would I recommend the report? When I was at an OTA, I would have been all over this report. Tour operator, let's say I'm running a, a local brewery tour. Is there enough in the arrival report that's actionable for me, practical? Probably not. Yeah, it's a great overview. If I have investors, I might show it with them, or if I'm looking for investment... But I don't think it really had enough in the report for me to take action on. Now, in fairness to the team at Arrival, this is the first in a series of reports, but I would love to see it drilled down by vertical. So, for instance, let's use the, the brewery tour example for now, where they're able to do to research brewery tours around the world and come back and say, well, the, the average booking window for a brewery tour is this. The average duration for the booking tour is that. The OTA that provides most bookings or is most successful for brewery tours is this one. That's the kind of information I will get, rip my credit card out of my wallet, my pocketbook, and pay for. And I hope that Arrival are looking at that kind of information. I'd love it split down by vertical to really help us to, to plan our businesses as we go forward. All right, so I think that's enough on the Arrival report. 29 bucks, as I say. Yeah. All right. The webinars. I followed my own advice this week and I didn't actually attend many webinars. I registered for quite a few and most of them send you a recording. So I do have a bit of a backlog of ones I want to get to. I did join the webinar our friends at Redeem hosted and I joined it for two reasons. First of all, Redeem were very kind to sponsor the Tourpreneur Brief for the month of April I can't, I can't put that brief out, the daily brief, without support of companies such as Checkfront, such as Redeem, such as TRK Creative, past sponsors of the brief. So the least I could do is show up for their webinar, right? Um, but it wasn't just that. Robert Graff was speaking, and I'm a big fan of Robert's. Most of you will know him. He's been in Vegas for, for years. Uh, he worked at Papillon. He's now at Stiff Tours. And I always enjoy Robert. When he talks about the industry, because I think he's been involved probably, uh, I'm going to age him, so I'm not going to say how long he's been involved. Let's just say he's experienced, 
He's been in the front lines. He's been on the trenches. And uh, he's always got a lot of value. So I wanted to join for that reason. And they were talking about coalitions and how different attractions are getting together, you know, in Boston and in Vegas to create their own websites. And I, it does get me wondering what we can do in the tour world, especially as we get out of COVID. What can we do with our competitors? Or, you know, you get a food tour together, a walking tour, a bike tour, a history tour. You know, can you create something and, you know, share the budget uh, to promote each, each and everyone's tours? This is a subject I, and an area I really want to delve into in the next couple of weeks. So if you've got ideas on that, again, please drop me a note at tourpreneurshow at gmail.com. But one of the things Robert said, so Bindle Stiff run day and multi-day tours uh, into the national parks. I'm, I really want to go on one of their tours. They look fantastic. And he was saying they are now looking at, once we're out of lockdown, social distancing. You know, they, they put people on a bus and drive them to the parks and you know, hotels and camping and all of that. And that could be out the window, right? Because people may be like, I'm not getting on a bus with people. So they are now looking at developing a self-drive aspect where you get the vehicle through Bindlestiff and you follow the tour guide through the route, through the park. And again, that's something that, you know, the whole COVID thing, social distancing is making us think a little differently about how we run our businesses. Intrigued by that and intrigued to see how that looks and, and how it performs. And I'm sure Robert will come on the show in the future and talk us through that. The other things that Bindlestiff are, are looking at is a private vehicle and guides for smaller groups. Uh, and I think that's something we're all going to have to look at. Again, as I said at the top of the show, we don't really know, okay, because there's no data and we don't know how this post-COVID world is going to look like. But I think it's smart to start researching smaller group tours for those travelers who are concerned about being in groups. So that was a good one, uh, Redeem. I'll find out if it's recorded and available, and I'll add it to the show notes, tourpreneur.com forward slash 78. A couple of other things. Canva. I'm a, a couple of weeks ago, I said that I was going to up my Canva skills. You know, graphic design is not my forte. And I know if you've seen my images for the show, I'm not the best, and they're not the most dynamic. But I thought, you know, I have this time at home, I had a Udemy course that I bought some time ago. So it's always a good idea to sign up for their emails because occasionally they do these dirt cheap sales. And I think I paid $9.99 for this Canva course. So I went through that and you'll notice, if, especially if you go on the Facebook page, the last couple of my shows and images I've put out, I got some nice comments. They're definitely a little bit more easier on the eye and the images are popping. So that's been something I've been learning. And also asking for help is really important. I reached out to, to Jen, Jennifer Burke. I'm not happy with my website right now. I did pay about $3,000 to change it to a V2. V1 was my own WordPress site. It is a lot better than V1, but I'm still not happy about the way it looks. And right now I'm working on this post, which is the books that tour operators recommend, that books that improve their business. And I don't want it to be just a basic blog post. I want it to be something that's easy on the eye, easy for you to go through and pick out which ones you want to purchase and read. I'm not convinced my current formatting with WordPress, what I've got set up is going to be any good for that. So, you know, Jennifer's working with me on that. And, you know, she's helping a lot of people on the group right now. And I'm really glad to see people asking for help and not feeling too proud. I know, you know, sometimes our websites are our baby and we put a lot of work into it. But look, there's so much, so many people out there that want to help you. And when we're out of COVID and start getting revenue in, you know, consider hiring experts that can really take your website to the next level. I also want to say a huge thank you to John Laverne and Peter Syme, John at Bulldog Tours, and Peter Syme, who you all know, a Thousand Mile Journeys. I was talking to Nikki who featured on our episode this week, talking about how to engage tour guides. And Nikki has, we, off air we were chatting and we came up with this business idea for Nikki and I don't want to steal her thunder and talk too much about it. She's going through her due diligence. And I reached out to John and Peter and said, Nikki has this business idea. I've suggested that she talks to some tour operators outside of her network. Please be honest with her and the feedback. Does this business idea have legs? Is it something you would appreciate as a tour operator, does it have value? And both of them wrote back, John in particular wrote a really <laughs> detailed email about the way he sees this business idea. And him and Peter Syme are on the phone with, with Nikki next week. And you know, I share this because Peter and John have their own struggles, their own challenges. They're trying to keep their head above water. They want to rescue their businesses. 
but they're prepared to help others. And I keep thinking to myself, you know, there are not many industries like this where we all help each other. So big round of applause to John and Peter. And I'm really excited for you, Nikki. I, I hope this comes to fruition. Health. <laughs> I have decided to kind of up things a little bit. You know, lockdown diet has not been good. Bottle of wine at night and cheese and I'm getting my walking in, but I'm not really achieving um, any kind of success with my my weight loss goals. And, you know, for me, I've, I've definitely packed some weight on over the last two years, since mainly since working from home and definitely since leaving New York City. Uh, I don't get as many steps in as I used to. So, uh now I've come up with the idea that I need to get my workout in before 7 a.m. every day because what's happening is I get an email, I get a phone call, there's a webinar. Next thing I know, I'm not getting in my, my run or my push-ups or my squats or whatever it may be. So, you know, I've decided, right, 6 a.m. run or I, I'm lucky I have a Peloton bike. So if any of you have a Peloton bike, there's tags now. So if you put tag, um, hashtag tourpreneur, I set it up this morning, please add me because I always love cycling with, with friends and people that I know. So that's what I need to work on is I need to get that workout out the way, done by 7 a.m. because if I don't, I just get distracted and it doesn't happen. And if we think about the lockdown, I'm not getting, I'm not traveling anywhere. I'm not going to birthday parties, the usual things that derail me and my, my health goals. Um, so no excuses really, not for dropping at least 20 pounds come the summer, right? I mean, come August, that's where I really want to get to. And even this weekend, I drank non-alcoholic IPA. Can you believe it? I didn't have any beer this weekend. Sorry, Christian. I know that's going to hurt. But actually, it wasn't bad. <laughs> All right, before I wrap up, coming up this week, we have an exciting episode of the show. And it's with a tour operator. And we talk about why you should not create a virtual tour. Yes, why you should not create a virtual tour. Because this is the... The newest thing, I see a lot of tour operators running out there to create virtual tours because we see everyone else doing it. So to this next week's guest is going to talk through seven questions she asked herself to evaluate whether virtual tours were right for her, and she decided they weren't. Uh, we're going to talk through that process. And I want to say, as I wrap up here, a huge thank you to you, the listener. In the month of April, we had nine, our show has listened to nine thousand times just over nine thousand downloads that's a record it's the most ever i wish it was in the better circumstances but to all of you in 110 countries around the world who listen to the show each download i see uh, you put fuel in my tank to keep producing to inspire me to keep producing these episodes for you as always if there's any guests you want to hear from or uh, round tables you want drop me an email this is your show Okay, I'm just the lucky guy who gets to host it and ask the questions. So show notes for today, tourpreneur.com forward slash 78. Stay healthy, be well. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Tourpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit tourpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Tourpreneur.